All right, so we got some pretty good conditions, man. Um, we got low pressure. Some showers are gonna be coming through. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get hit with anything heavy. Well, I'm excited about that. It's finally uh, something that's gonna keep the boat traffic down. That's been a big, big problem for me. There's quite a few areas I like to fish when it's you know busier on the water on a weekend, etc., so I can beat the crowds. Uh, but I don't have access to any of those areas right now. So I'm fishing just basically what I got, which is unfortunately tends to be pretty busy, even when it's not COVID-19 stuff. So flounder season's closed here in North Carolina. Um, the Southern flounders are starting to show up. Uh, there's some fluke on the ocean or summer flounder, but they're not too big. North Carolina gets three species of flounder. We get the Southern flounders, Gulf flounders, which are in the ocean, and summer flounders. Summer flounders seem to be the least prevalent around here with the southern flounder being the biggest ones that we see here in general. So here's what I want to narrow in on for table fare. Really pompano and spade fish is what I'm thinking to do more of and try to figure out a little bit. So that's what I'm thinking. But uh, anyway. All right, fellas, while well, we had the white out, a little bit of weather. I'm sure we're going to have some residual wind and just disorganized water. It's probably going to be a little choppy. All right, we're going to get up on the edge of these rocks here and we're going to do a little jigging. See what we can find here, and then we're gonna cross over into the ocean. I think that's what I want to do here. I'm guessing that's all the little blue fish down there, or lizard fish. I think we've received the invasion, fellas. Have no fear. The king is here. The king is here. That's a lizard fish, a nasty fella. You don't want anything to do with him. Oh snap, what's that? Some decent fellas on the retrieve. Oh, bluefish. It's actually not a bad bluefish for, for here. You wouldn't call that a chopper blue per se, but that's not a dink ass bluefish. Uh, little cocktail blues. Yeah, at least they're around, huh? Better than nothing. I'm starting to see a couple pelicans going over there. So what I want to do is I think I'm going to start trolling the beach. We'll look for bonker schools or pogies. I'm right, gonna go to this old school crippled herring. The only problem I'm bumping into now is I only have a 50 pound leader with me. That was dumb. I didn't pack any lighter leader, but you know, we're gonna throw this crippled herring into these pogies or bunker, whatever you wanna call them. This is where the, where the Spanish are, so. Spanish mackerel? Could it be? Yes, indeed. Ooh, whoa. Little side hook action there. Not quite sportsmanlike, but that's gonna work. I've been finding a bunch of these. This is the size I've been seeing. Maybe we'll figure out a kind of a creative recipe. We've seen some, there's some bigger fish to the south of here than this, that's for sure. But and off off the beach, there's definitely some bigger ones around. But right now, we're kind of limited to the surf zone based on the wind, so can't quite get off the beach and do the things we want to do. So we're gonna hang out tight here in the suds. Ooh, yes, sir. Let's see what that is. Probably another bluefish, but you never know. Pick that one on the bottom of the school of pogies there. Just chicken down deep under those guys. Yeah, more bluefish. Cocktail blues, man. It's the bluefish. Oh, it's been a while. All right, let's put them back. Well, at least there's a decent amount of like 20 inch bluefish, right? It's good, good fun for the kids. What I need to do is bring Meg out for this. She'll enjoy it. I've got a slight problem, fellas, though. Only got 50 pound leader with me, so nothing lighter. Uh, I thought I had some, some lighter leader. That's a better fish. <laughs> well, I, from what I've heard from commercials, Spanish don't care. But considering we're fishing inshore here, you know, I kind of get a little skeeved out about going really light. Ooh. 
Oh boy, we got we got a bleeder. We got a bleeder. The difference is uh, the Spanish tend to uh, hang more in the uh, seem to pop up more, and those bluefish will hang under that pot of bait. Uh, I guarantee you, if there's a redfish, he's going to be under that too, and potentially a cobia. Um, I was re-rigging, gonna I was going to do some live bait fishing, but uh, at the same time. Uh, what I was trying to say here is be prepared to fire off at a moment's notice, you know, and I think that's exactly what we managed to do just right now is uh, Get a second one there Wish they were a little bigger man make it a little more interesting if we got some better sized ones In this neighborhood the bigger ones are kind of around uh, A little bit south of me right now, but where I don't have access to unfortunately but, uh, yeah, we'll, let's make a couple more casts into that blind cast. Mm-hmm. Screw it. All right. It could be a king mackerel around already. We're gonna we'll, we'll send it out there. Worst comes to worst, we'll you know get destroyed by a bunch of little bluefish. Deal with that. But yeah, you know, uh, let's snag a bunker here. You want to cast the head of the school, man. If you're gonna use these snagging rates, um, don't cast into them. You scare the whole school. A head's really what you want to do. Like, kind of like right where I did. Alright, there's one. I'm gonna put him on that live bait rig and let's see what happens. Hooked him in a good spot there. I don't live bait fish that much, but he used to. The second hook right there is good. All right, friend, go for it. Uh, we'll just, you know, work around here a little bit, see what happens. Meanwhile, what we're gonna do here is re-rig something. We got our live bait out there. All right, looks like there's something going on here now. Let's see what that is. Nice Spanish mackerel, proper Spanish, right there, fellas. Uh, I was just jigging the Albi Smasher underneath these uh, pogies. Let's keep, let's get that one in there. That's a better one for sure. It's one we're not embarrassed to show on you, to you fellas. Third Spanish mackerel. This one's actually not a bad one at all. Uh, probably around 21 inches. Definitely a better one. First few. Mm. Ooh. Puked up a buffet on me. They yeah, were jigging the Albi Smasher right off the bottom. Kind of drifting. I got my live bunker out there. Nothing's doing on him. I'm just popping along, um, maybe a crank up. I've, I've been seeing fish on the screen, so I'm like, eh, there should be some more. All right, that's not a bad one at all. I'll be happy. I'm a lot happier seeing a couple that size for sure. All right, so we worked it for a couple, a little bit longer. We've caught 100 million cocktail bluefish I have caught up on camera. Uh, it seems like the bluefish absolutely took over. I'm not seeing any Spanish mackerel. I haven't had a touch on a live bunker, which is odd. Um, I guess there's just not that much in the, you know, off the break and the, off the bait schools. All that bunker is kind of in the surf zone now, so I'm like, or bluefish, you know, if there's some other stuff there, I'd park it. I'm gonna work my way, you know, kind of back around the, the jetty and the rocks, and we'll kind of round it out over there. Got one on the Albi Smasher, um, and a, two on metals. Missed a couple more. Most of them were like 15 inches. The biggest one we got was jigging directly under the bait, as opposed to casting and like looking for fish on top. That one was just squidding uh, under the bait. And uh, they're all on like tiny little micro baits too. Messy, look how messy I am, man. That's, if yeah, doing this sort of fishing gets messy, so. That's something decent. Jigging world Nexus slope pitch jig. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I take it, I'll take that. Uh, Spanish mackerel. Man, that's a lot of work getting these things going right now. 
That's cool. Oh, he's picking up the other stuff too. Cool. That's on the Jiggin' World tape. Try that again, huh? All right, I gotta head in. This is a little too much of a headache. There are pods of bacon work kind of sporadically here. Nothing really super consistent. And I think the majority of it is bluefish, but there's enough Spanish mackerel and other stuff around that, you know, you see all these little pops. Hoagies getting sporadically worked everywhere. But now that I'm kind of back in the busier area, I'm kind of good. I can't. <laughs> we saw two types of bait today. Uh, one was a uh, hoagie, bunker, right? The other was, uh, I saw a couple of the gizzard, not gizzard chat, uh, threadfin herring, guys call them greenbacks, uh, Virginia, they call them threadfins typically. Good to see some bait along the beach. Um, it's gonna give me some more options of how to fish now, because um, uh, it's been just a little too busy for my liking. But uh, if we gotta keep doing that, and you know, hopefully we can, you know, live bait more, and, Refine a couple things, lock into that king mackerel soon is very possible. Cobia should be popping up. Um, it's just stressful trying to fish in those kinds of uh, conditions with all that boat traffic and stuff. Uh, let's get back to the little safer area and we'll talk a little. First of all, it seems like Spanish mackerel are expanding their range slowly. Um, you fellas up north watching from my old stopping grounds, you got a good run last year. I have a feeling you might get them again based on how warm this winter was and how similar this year is to last year's pattern. It's getting a little cooler in April than it was last year, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see those same Spanish mackerel uh, up in Jersey and uh, Western New York. It really would not surprise me one bit. Key differences between Spanish mackerel, bluefish, and false albacore, non-trolling. The thing that Spanish mackerel do uh, the most is not really reveal themselves at times. Uh, sometimes they'll be down deep in the water column pretty often. Uh, but, you know, they'll get sloppy and attack bait. Uh, they don't hold pods of bait as aggressively as bluefish do also. Um, bluefish will just hold on to those uh, pokey pods or bumper pods for, you know, they'll just hover underneath them. Spanish mac are gonna come and go, you know, miss all around. It's always just a good strategy to be ready and fire off. You know, surf guys, kayak guys, we all have our, our, our rule books and strategies uh, for the uh, Spanish mackerel. Guys on the piers like the gotcha plugs, etc., etc. I mean, guys on the sand like tins. Shiny sometimes works better. They are a little less particular than false albacore, the type of profile, but um, you have to have some precision if you want to get them casting. Is that how I want to say? It? I think so. Um, but shiny stuff. Like false albacore, most anglers would default to an epoxy jig, right? Those long uh, hoagie jigs that are pretty popular. I think for Spanish mackerel, a default jig might be something shiny. My One of my defaults would probably be a crippled herring. Sure, matching the hatch is a good idea, but um, it's a little different what the, what the default might be. We're going to pack it in right now. Hope you fellas enjoyed. I'll have affiliate links in the video's description, everything we used. Maybe some bigger ones are going to show soon, and maybe we'll get better access to hunt them down, so I'll try. All right, fellas. Hope you enjoyed. Catch up with you soon.